A very good evening uh, to you all, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank our Lord uh, for giving it another opportunity uh, to study His wonderful words of life. So today, uh, we're going to have uh, a study on a very important uh, topic. As soon as we mentioned uh, about Egypt, uh, the thing that comes to our mind uh, is about uh, its land, <clears throat> the river uh, Nile, and the great uh, pyramids, uh, and the pharaohs uh, for which it was uh, very famous for. So today, we're going to see one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, which are still existing. See, one of the uh, seven uh, ancient wonders of the world, everything is uh, destroyed, but except uh, the one and that is the Great uh, Pyramid of uh, Giza. So this Great Pyramid of Giza uh, is one of the unique uh, of all the pyramids. Uh, because in Egypt itself, there is more than 118 pyramids. Uh, in, the whole, in the whole world, there are more than 200 pyramids. And the Great Pyramid of Giza is uh, 764 feet wide, 486 feet uh, high. That means uh, it can cover a 13-acre land. It is built upon a 13-acre land. So understand what is the magnitude of 13 acres. Uh, and just imagine a uh, football ground, a very huge football ground, and 10 such uh, football grounds combined together actually is uh, nearly more than a 13 acre. And it is upon that uh, huge land surface uh, that the Great Pyramid is uh, built uh, today. Until the 19th century, the pyramid was the tallest uh, structure in the world. But uh, you see, in the 19th century, once the Burj Khalifa was built, it overtook uh, the height of the Great uh, Pyramid. And the Great Pyramid is uh, composed of more than uh, 23 lakh blocks. And it, is, it, is, it uh, weighs more than 60 lakh tons. And the weight of some of the stones... Uh, the blocks is somewhere around 2 to 30 tons and uh, average is more than uh, 16 tons of each. So this uh, uh, huge uh, granite blocks have been uh, you see, carved from the near quarry and moved to this uh, uh, structure where the pyramid is there. And you can see some of the you see uh, granite structures which are left over there. You can see the massive, you see, um, size. This man himself is more than, uh, is nearly six feet. and But still, that granite block is more than uh, that one. So, if you see, it is uh, nearly the height of uh, each and every uh, block. You see, it is really more than um, uh, 12 feet. And the length varies uh, uh, you see, dear brethren, and uh, in olden days, uh, without any modern equipment, uh, how they cut open from the, you see, nearby mountains, uh, and uh, how they pluck it out, uh, you see, and how they transport it, uh, is really a modern wonder. Because you can cut a granite from the sides, uh, but how do, can you plug it out uh, from the back? Uh, even today, it's a great wonder. And uh, the granite stones are so neatly finished that uh, there is uh, hardly any space between uh, the two granite blocks placed upon each other. There is nothing used in between the two granite blocks. Uh, none of the, uh, you see, cement or mortar, uh, nothing is used. But still the blocks are placed one upon the other. But even then, you see, the... Finishing is so accurate that you can you can't even pierce a sharp uh, blade between the gaps, and uh, this pyramid is uh, you see uh, brought from nearby uh, Mount Sinai place where uh, Moses took the law commandments, and uh, from such a far place, how it was transported without any modern equipments at the time in olden days. Uh, without any damage, with clean, precise uh, finishing, how it was uh, moved up 
placed upon one upon the each other with a exact uh, you see a matching and fixing is really a wonder and this great pyramid originally was composed of uh, casing stones so it was initially covered with a casing stone a white uh, limestone a white uh, casing stone so it used to look like this uh, and uh, but now you see uh, these things are not there it was completely covered uh, with a uh, the uh, white uh, casing stone and it was called as uh, <coughs> iketa in egyptian language so why it was called as iket means uh, iket uh, signified uh, a glorious light uh, because it shine like a jewel in the egypt uh. you see and on the top it was covered with a gold pure gold uh, you see capstone but nowadays uh, none of these things are there but in uh, those days uh, when someone has to find uh, the landmark to egypt uh, they can see the bright shining uh, you see like a star shining from a far place and that was a you see like a compass uh, uh, guiding the people to land of uh, egypt uh, but today none of these stones are there because those stones are robbed by the caliphs uh, you see and uh, arabs uh, they build their uh, um, big big huge uh, mosques and structures in their places uh, dear brethren <clears throat> this uh, is a ungli structure that is visible even from the moon you see the ungli human structure built on earth that is visible from the moon is uh, only the great pyramid of giza and the great pyramid of giza has so much of stones or the blocks that uh, if it placed one uh, next to each other you can make a uh, circle the entire globe of this earth it is so strong that uh, even today if the egyptian government wants to destroy this uh, pyramid they not able to destroy it uh, because they don't have so much of funds to destroy this pyramid uh. and this pyramid uh, has got uh, geographical scientific uh, mathematical so much of other significance uh, in it uh. like for example you see the great pyramid of giza, giza is located exactly at the land surface uh, center of the land surface of the whole earth now what do you mean by the <coughs> center of the land surface of the whole earth if you see the land surface you see if you take the flat uh, land surface of the earth that can be equally divided into four parts uh, the four quotients uh, and you see that line the center line passes exactly over this uh, pyramid that means the the left portion you see is equal to the uh, right portion and the top portion is equal to the you see the bottom portion so this shows that the pyramid of giza was built exactly on the center of the whole earth therefore you remember <clears throat> the name middle east why the why the name east was given east is okay but why the name middle east was given middle means it is the center so it is in center of the whole earth and not only that one we have this north pole and south pole and this north pole and south pole passes exactly you see exactly over the pyramid you see uh, it is just uh, having a just a Uh, magnitude of a small uh, degree deviation is because of uh, uh, moving of the uh, earth crust uh, because of in so many years and this has got also mathematical calculation the relationship between the circle and the square you see the pi the formula pi 22 by 7 that formula that mathematical you see concept is used in this pyramid So today we use this formula to find out the relations between the circle and the square. This formula is already used in the Great Pyramid of Giza, and you see Isaac Newton, you see the one who invented the this is gravitational force, the one who invented you see metric system. See until such time there was a FPS system, CGS system. we see various types of systems in all over the world then all the scientists in this world they all came together they wanted to uh, <clears throat> you see 
uh, move away from this uh, differences of uh, calculations uh, because in uh, in great britain they should do the calculation based upon foot pound and seconds uh, and uh, while other place they should do upon centimeter gram and uh, seconds still some other used to do upon meter kilogram and seconds uh, you see therefore uh, all the scientists uh, you see all the people they joined together and decided to have a common system so that it can be used entirely <clears throat> all over the world for the benefit of everybody that was the time that a metric system was invented meter means uh, meter kilogram and seconds so therefore if you see wherever you go whichever world you go whichever po portion of the world you go you see there uh, the weight is measured, measured in kilogram or grams and uh, length is measured in meters and kilometers uh, you see and liquid is uh, measured in liters uh, instead of gallons uh. so this system is already you see implemented in the pyramid and this system can be found used in the pyramid and not only the pyramid it was uh, coincides uh, with a measurement that was used you see uh, in the building of the ark of nova and uh, in the construction of the tabernacle and uh, in the construction of the solomon temple so uh, uh, it has got also the astronomical features in it the angle between uh, height and the base length of the pyramid that shows exactly the distance between sun and the earth that is 9184 million miles and not only that one there is a air chamber connected uh, from the king's chamber that exactly points to the two important uh, constellations one is orion that is mentioned in the bible other is uh, draco you see draco means uh, you know very well uh, signifies dragon or the devil so why this intricate uh, measurements have been used you see still a wonder and not only that one the great pyramid uh, the exact way the entrance of the great pyramid is built if you draw a straight line from uh, the entrance of the great pyramid it exactly comes to the place where jesus was born so today we have international time zone that was that uh, first passes to the green which uh, meridian but <clears throat> if this uh, international time zone is made to pass over the pyramid you believe that uh, the scientists believe that uh, the whole world will have a common time and very easy to calculate and uh, the base length of the pyramid is uh, measured in pyramid inches that is uh, 365 and a quarter pyramid inches sir and we know exactly that this signifies the number of days in a year we have 365 days and a quarter days in a calendar year so now the question is that who built it why they built it for what purpose they built it so many believe that uh, this is the you see uh, a grave a coffin of a egyptian emperor named khufu if it is a coffin of a khufu we don't find any evidence of uh, any relics or any monumental things which are related to king khufu or emperor khufu place inside the pyramid but there are proof in other pyramids where the dead bodies are preserved and kept there but here there's no such uh, proof at all and moreover there are no carvings uh, on the walls of this pyramid when compared to the other pyramids uh, all the passages uh, in the pyramid is above the ground level but while other pyramids everything is built below the ground level now what is the purpose of building it some people believe that it is a space observatory still some people believe that it's a alien launch pad and still some people believe that it's a secret vault uh, built to save and uh, keep important treasures but dear brethren surely nobody will built with uh, such a precision such a mathematical astrological astronomical geographical calculations just to keep some things uh, just for uh, all these things uh. then if you see who might have built it uh, if you see dear brethren you see we believe it is built by god if god has built it and whom did god used to build it probably god might have used job because in the book of job we see that he was a uh, very rich person among all the persons in the east was a very very multimillionaire 
so probably mostly god would have used job or god would have used melchizedek also melchizedek was a you see a king and a priest of god so probably you see god might have used any of them but uh, we don't have any clear reference but uh, if there is uh, any clue in the bible if you see yes there is a clue about this pyramid in the bible so let us read ephesians 2:20 Ephesians 2.20. Uh, Joel Brother, can you read? And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. Very good. See, Jesus Christ uh, himself being the chief corner stone. Okay. Psalm 118.22, Brother. The stone which the builders refuse is become the head stone of the corner. The stone which the builders refused is become the head of the, you see, head stone of the corner. Now, what is this head, head stone of the corner? The corner stone means, okay, which is the chief corner stone? Like, for example, we only built a house, yeah, which is the chief corner stone? Now, many people tell, oh, brother, the first stone that is laid while building the you see, structure that is called as the cornerstone. But how can that be the chief cornerstone? And how can that be the head of the cornerstones? Now, this, uh, you see, uh, verse is only applicable only in the pyramid. You see, pyramid uh, has uh, how many corners? If you see, pyramid has got five corners. Uh, you see, it doesn't have only four corners, it has five corners. The fifth one, the important one, is in the top. So, and that is the chiefest of all the corners. Why? Because without that corner, the pyramid doesn't remain a pyramid at all. So, you you tilt this pyramid in various way, whichever way you want it, the pyramid still remains the pyramid. This itself is a clear proof. The pyramid is the perfect structure. And this verse exactly fits only for the pyramid, the chief top head stone. You see? Okay. Now, this is an indirect verse. But is there any direct verse in the Bible? Yes. Let us read Isaiah 19, 19 to 20. Isaiah 19, chapter 19 to 20. Uh, Munna, sister, you are there. Can you read? In the day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and the pillar at the border thereof to the Lord, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior. And a, and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Thank you, sir. In that day, there shall be an altar to the Lord. Where? In the midst of the land of Egypt, at the pillar and the border thereof. How can there be one thing at the border as well as in the middle? See, item can be either in the middle or it can be in the border. But how can, you see, the thing be simultaneously on the border as well as in the center. And moreover, they should give witness about the Lord. How is it possible if you say this is only possible only with this great pyramid? How? If you say the Egyptian government has divided Egypt into two parts, the upper Egypt and the lower Egypt. And you see the border of this upper and the lower Egypt passes exactly on the center of this uh, great pyramid. Hence, this great pyramid is located on the complete center of the whole earth and as well as the, at the border of the upper and the lower Egypt. Hence, uh, you see, the pyramid name is given as Giza. Giza in uh, Egyptian language means border. Hence, the great pyramid of Giza means the great pyramid located at the border and the center of the earth. Okay. It says that it gives witness about God. Now, how does this pyramid witness about God? You see, if all these things are fulfilled, definitely they should witness about God. Now, let us see how this pyramid witnesses about our one true God and about his divine plan. 
So we have seen the divine plan of Jesus, which God has made for the whole world. And we'll see how this fits, uh, you see, the divine plan. See, this pyramid is composed of actually three chambers. Uh, that is the king's chamber, the queen's chamber, and the pitta. And uh, to access these uh, three chambers, there are uh, actually three passages. Uh, a horizontal passage, uh, you see, an ascending passage and a descending passage. Uh. And there is only one entrance uh, for this pyramid that is uh, at the 17th floor of this uh, pyramid. But unfortunately, they could not look at this 17th floor uh, uh, entrance. The, the thief broke inside uh, the pyramid, you see, in the 10th floor uh, to access what is there inside. So as soon as you come inside the pyramid, you see, you find uh, the descending passage. So the descending passage uh, descends uh, rapidly and goes to the pit. Uh, so the descending passage is nearly 4 feet height and 4 feet width. So if any man wants to want wants to walk uh, perfectly standing erectly, he can't walk it. Uh. Why? Because uh, you see the height is only 4 feet. You can see the image here. This is the actual and the real uh, you see image. This uh, itself is the height of the you see, descending passage. So as soon as the man enters, he can't work uh, perfectly. He has to bow himself down and he has to walk. And uh, the descending passage is so steep that as soon as a man enters, he immediately walks down, immediately runs down to the pit. Now, what does this uh, descending passage signify? We all know that God created man perfectly. You see, in the image of God. But once when Adam sinned, what happened? He lost the perfection and fell into sin. So once when he fell into sin, he, de he was degraded and he walked the broad way in such a way that he came and ended in the pit. Let us read Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Matthew 7, chapter 13 and 14. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Rome, Matthew 7, 13, 14? Enter at the strict gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, and leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in. There it. Ah, thank you, sir. So it says, huh? wide is the great, uh, broad is the way that lead to destruction. Many are there uh, that are going into it. Uh, you see, many want to change their way uh, while descending the passage, but they can't change it. Uh, why? Because uh, it is very descending. You can't change it. It's just only four feet high. Therefore, what does the Bible say? Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. Nobody can walk uprightly, perfect in the sight of God. So where do the comments reach? If you see, they come and reach the pit. You see, Adam was the one who inaugurated this Broadway. You see, and through Adam, today, the entire generation of Adam, entire race of Adam is walking in the Broadway and reaching his end. That is death. See, it took... Adam, 930 years uh, to finish this uh, Broadway. But today, it's become so smooth and so fast and so descending that a uh, man reaches this end of this uh, Broadway at the, uh, at the very short period of 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Uh. Okay. Now, where does it lead to? It says it goes to a pit. Uh, what does this pit uh, signify? You see, what is the basis of sin? The basis of sin is death. Uh. Let us read Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14, 12. Uh, Muna sister, can you read Proverbs 14, 12? There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm, the way, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is death. The end is death. That is the meaning of the pitta. So, if you see in this pit, 
there is no water. It's not actually a well. It's just termed as pit. There is only gravels there. There is no water inside it. So what does that signify? That signifies the death condition. The condition of the grave. You see, where there is no water at all. Where there is no hope. Until Jesus died for us on the cross. Let us read Zechariah 9.11. Amar brother, you are there. Can you read Zechariah 9.11 brother? So you can read from the screen as well. Hmm. As for the the also by the blood of the covenant, I have sent for the uh, prisoners out of the pit uh, wherein is no water. See, I have sent for thy prisoners. Everybody has gone to the prison house of death. You see, what does God say? I will send for thy prisoners out of the pit, pit, in the grave, where there is no water, there is no hope at all. For the mountain, until when? Until Jesus came and died on the cross. Okay. Now, if you see, as you walk down the descending passage, just as you enter it, just within few, you see, uh, distance, there is an ascending passage which goes to the two chambers above. One is the queen's chamber, other is the king's chamber. Now, what is the meaning of this ascending passage? This ascending passage, again, is a four feet height. If anybody wants to walk perfectly, they can't walk it. But, unfortunately, nobody are able to walk this ascending passage. Why? Why, if you see, this ascending passage is blocked by a 50 ton huge granite block. You see? You can see here, you see, this uh, ascending passage where uh, man could have easily accessed the upper chambers is totally blocked by the red granite uh, plug. You see, what does this signify? You see, this signifies the law, the way of the law. You see, through the law, man could have been justified in sight of God. He could have lived continually, but unfortunately, by the law is the knowledge of sin and nobody is justified by the deeds of the law. Let us read Leviticus 18.5. Uh, Gopal Buddha, can you read? You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, uh, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. See, if any man keeps the Lord's uh, statutes, uh, you see, he shall uh, live by it. Uh, you see, the jah, so they could have lived by the law. But unfortunately, what happened? Uh, this law was not successful. That is the reason God sent his Jesus. Uh, you see, let us read Romans 3.20. Romans 3.20. Uh, Joel, brother, can you read Romans 3.20? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, these, there shall no flesh but justi be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Very good, brother. So, no man is justified by the deeds of the law. Why? It is blocked. It is blocked by a plague. Why? Because, you see, no man is justified by the deeds of the law. So, hence, is there no other way? To access the king's chamber and the queen's chamber? Yes, there is one more way. As we get down the descending passage, just before going to the pit, there is a well shaft with risers above. You see, and if a man comes through this well shaft, he can again access the king's chamber and the queen's chamber, which was earlier accessed through the ascending passage. Now, what does this signify? This shows the narrow way and was opened by our Lord Jesus Christ by his death on the cross. Jesus said, no, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. 
You see? And there is no other name given under heaven whereby man can be saved than the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is that uh, way. Jesus is that well shaft uh, through which, uh, you see, man can be walking up uh, uh, and to, uh, you see, reach the way of salvation. So read Hebrews 10.20. Hebrews 20. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Hebrews 10.20? By your new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his place. Very good, sir. So Jesus has consecrated a new and a living way. See, new, living way, not a death way, not a descending way. How did he consecrate? Through his veil, that is his flesh. Through which we are able to have access to the throne of grace. You see, dear brother, and hence this well shaft signifies the narrow way which Jesus opened by death of his cross. Okay. Now one of the special thing about this well shaft is that as you walk up the well shaft, when you come to the ground level, there's a place called as grotto. See, this is a natural real photo. See, if you see the grotto, there's a natural rock formation. See, how do you... Uh, by seeing this uh, natural rock, this is not... Uh, carved or man placed this they believe that it was there even when they built it even when the foundation was laid this stone was there there itself so if you see how does the rock look like you see it looks almost like a lamb so what does this signify you read in the bible that jesus is the lamb of god you see therefore jesus the lamb through that lamb sacrifice only we are able to have access to God. Therefore, if you see, we come to the opening there, you see, and uh, that opening has access to all the ways. What does that represent? Sir? That represents Jesus has brought to light death and life. You see, so there was only death, but Jesus by his sacrifice on the cross is brought life and immortality to light. 2 Timothy 1.10. 2 Timothy 1.10. Amar brother, can you read 2 Timothy 1.10? Amar okay. Yeah. Okay, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our <clears throat> Savior Jesus Christ. Who had who had abolished death and had um, brought life and immortality immortality to light through the gospel. Uh -huh. you see, who had abolished death and brought to light immortality, you see, and life. That is the opening uh, through Jesus. Okay. Now, if you come. Uh, through the grotto, we can access two chambers. Queen's chamber, king's chamber. Now what does this two chambers uh, signify? One is above, one is below. King's chamber is above, queen's chamber is below. This represents two, two salvations. The king's chamber signifies the heavenly salvation. Well, the queen's chamber signifies the earthly salvation. How? So let us see. When you need to go to the king's chamber, you just can't go directly like it. You need to pass through three chambers. One is the grand gallery, second is the antechamber, and finally go inside the king's chamber. Now, what does this represent, sir? What does Jesus say? You see, uh, Jesus said, no. If any man wants to come to that heavenly salvation and sit to along with him on his throne, how they should qualify? They should be of the called ones. They should be of the chosen ones. They should be faithful to God. Until their death. Uh, Revelation 17, 14. Called, chosen and faithful. These three steps uh, they need to fulfill it. Uh, you see, called, chosen and faithful. So, not only really sufficient that you be the called ones, uh, but you need to be the chosen part and be faithful till death. Uh, you see, then only we can be part of the heavenly salvation. But one special thing about this uh, uh, grand gallery, which has access to that uh, uh, King's chamber is that the grand gallery is seven times uh, 
bigger than the descending or the ascending passage. You see, the height is 28 feet, while the height was the descending and ascending passage was just 4 feet. So, 7 fours are 28, 28 feet, 7 times grand. The width is also 7 feet, so the man can easily walk comfortably without bending himself. He can walk directly inside. The, see, this is a photo of uh, the, you see, the chamber. You see? Huh? How is it? If you see grand gallery, it is very grand. And not only that one, to help man to climb up, there are a lot of holes here where he can use it to climb himself up. Now, what does that signify? That signifies the grace. You see, the grace through which we have in Jesus Christ to help us to walk ahead in the narrow way walk of life. This was not there in the Jewish age. This was not there under the law. Under the law, there was no forgiveness of sins. But here in the gospel age, you see, there is forgiveness of sins in the blood of Christ. You see, and we are, can still continue to walk ahead in the narrow walk of life. So, after passing this grand gallery, you come to the great step. Now, this great step, after climbing up the great step, there is an antechamber. Now, if you need to go to this antechamber, you need to bow three times. You see, we can see here, bow the first time, bow the second time, and bow down the second and the third time. Then only you can go inside the king's chamber. I'll share a video for you after the class. So you can just see. It's very wonderfully uh, shown there. So what does this three times bowing represent? Sir? You see, what did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, what are the terms and conditions? Sir? What are the terms and conditions? Who can tell? The terms and conditions of discipleship. Who will tell? Deny, deny himself. Carry the cross and follow him. Very good. Deny yourself, carry the cross and follow me. So these are three things a Christian has to do. Deny himself. Very good. That's the first boeing. Then carry the cross. That is the second one. The third one is just carrying the cross is not sufficient. Being faithful to God until death. Then you can reach the, you see, what the, the king is a chamber. Now, if you go inside the king's chamber, what is there? There is nothing there. This is only a coffer. This is not a coffin. Don't misunderstand. This is a coffer, a box. But this is not the size of a, you see, coffin. You know, what is the size of it? It is exactly the size of the Ark of the Covenant that is shown in the tabernacle. Now, what does this uh, signify? This signifies, you see, the reward which God is going to give to the church. The immortality. Revelation 26. Uh, Romy sister, can you read? Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Can you read? Blessed and holy is that. Holy is he that part in the first resurrection. On such the second that hath no power, but that they shall be Okay, they shall be priest of uh, God and of Christ mm -hmm. and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay, so blessed is he who has uh, part in the first resurrection. On such the death has no power. Second death has no power. There is no power of death at all. It is, uh, you see, immortality. It is like overcoming uh, death. And this is exactly the same size of uh, the tabernacle's Ark of the Covenant. So, uh, we all know God's beautiful plan that the uh, Bible says not only about the heavenly salvation, the Bible also says about the earth salvation. We have seen, no? There are two salvations in Jesus Christ. One is heavenly, other is earthly salvation. So if the king's chamber represents the heavenly salvation, the earthly salvation is signified by the queen's chamber. Beautifully it is shown there. See, this queen's chamber has a horizontal passage which gives access to the queen's chamber. And the specialty about this horizontal passage is that 
This horizontal passage, the first six portion is a four feet, but the last seventh portion, you see, that is nearly six to seven feet in height. So a person who is not able to walk perfectly in the first six parts he is able to walk clearly in the last seventh part. You see, you can see here the photo. The first six parts, a man is coming out uh, uh, through the horizontal passage. He is not able to walk perfectly. But once he steps down the last uh, part, he is able to stand and walk perfectly. You see, this is a real image, it's a real photo. Huh? So what does that represent? Uh? Huh? You see, that means uh, the 6,000 years of sin where man was not able to walk perfectly, you see, because of imperfection, because of sin. But the same man can, can walk perfectly in the sight of God when during the thousand year reign of Christ, uh, they shall stand uh, perfect uprightly and uh, walk uh, into the queen's chamber. Queen's chamber represents, uh, you see, the earthly salvation. So through Jesus, there are two salvations, earthly salvation and the heavenly salvation. This is what beautifully it is given in the pyramid. You see, Jesus is given a period of thousand years to rule on this earth. Why? To bring back the fallen mankind to perfection. So, in the six thousand years, they can't work perfectly. But the same people will work perfectly in the last thousand years. So, this is a beautiful plan of the ages which is signified in the pyramid. Therefore, Isaiah 1919, it says, no, there is a pillar at the border and the center of Egypt which gives witness about God means God's beautiful plan of the ages has been shown in this great pyramid. Okay. So I'll be sending the notes. Please go through the YouTube link also. Any doubts, any questions anybody has, they can ask.